Hello and welcome to LFC Focus. Liverpool are back in Premier League action this weekend after the fantastic Champions League semi-final first leg 5-2 win against Roma in midweek. They are playing Stoke City in the Saturday 12.30 kickoff in a game that has taken on a little bit of renewed significance after what happened against West Brom last weekend. Obviously, Liverpool are still in the race for those top four places. We're still in pole position as well. Still quite a few points ahead of Chelsea. But after the draw against West Bromwich Albion, suddenly it feels so much more like we can't take everything for granted and Liverpool will still have to go into this game searching for three points. Because unfortunately, having not beaten West Brom, it means that we can't really make that game against Chelsea next weekend a dead rubber, which would have been ideal really. We don't want extra pressure on in that penultimate game of the season to have to win it, to have to push for those top four places. Unfortunately, Liverpool are now in a position where they are going to have to find a slightly higher gear this time. I mentioned a lot in the post-match video for the West Brom game that it felt like the players were always just one gear below what they were really capable of. And that was obviously understandable with the Champions League game. But what Jurgen Klopp has really got to get into the uh, heads of the players this time is that even though the focus is absolutely on those games, those games are what will define our season, not this one against Stoke City this weekend. They've got to put it in the back of their minds. And all the talk before the West Brom game was all about that. You know, all the talk was, we're not thinking about Roma, we're just thinking about the West Brom game. But judging by the performance, and especially the last 10 minutes, it's obvious that that was exactly what Liverpool were thinking about and that's why they ended up throwing the game away and Liverpool just can't afford to do that again this weekend because we can't afford to put more pressure on ourselves when we've got this massive game against Roma in midweek coming up. So team news going into this tie, a few disappointing stories have come out off the back of the Roma game. Obviously, as we all know, Oxlade-Chamberlain is sidelined for the season and for the World Cup as well. At the moment, it's there's conflicting information out. Some saying it's going to be up to nine months. Some saying that it will be around about four months and that he will be available for pre-season. Obviously, with injuries that are that long term, it makes sense that you know there are conflicting stories and no one really knows how long Oxlade-Chamberlain is going to be out for. It seems that the more reputable sources are giving away these kind of numbers that are closer to four or five months, which is a bonus. Obviously, we want him back and fit by the start of next season or there or thereabouts. However, he will not be available for this weekend. Also, in very concerning news, Sadio Mane was spotted hobbling out of the Spire Hospital after a probable scan of some sort after the Roma game on Wednesday night. No, it wasn't. Roma game was Tuesday night, but it was Wednesday night that Sadio Mane was spotted hobbling out of the Spire Hospital. So that is a concern for Liverpool. I reckon if there's any issue with Mane whatsoever, it's highly unlikely we'll consider playing him for this game. Obviously, that goes against what I said at the top of the video about how we've got to go for this, we've got to go for three points. But when you've got the Roma game there, and with the injury situation that's going on at Liverpool at the moment, anyone who is a mild risk, don't bother playing them. Don't bother playing them because we are so thin on the ground in terms of our squad at the moment that we can't afford to be losing any more players, especially a star player like Sadio Mane. So I think he is unlikely to start this game. As for how I think we're actually going to line up, I reckon it's going to be Loris Karius in goal. No surprises. There have occasionally been people calling for Mignolet in these kind of games. We're expecting a lot of changes. Just get lost if you think that's what we should be doing. Absolutely keeping in Loris Karius. Then the centre-back pairing. This is an interesting one. I think we should go with Virgil van Dijk and Dejan Lovren because the issue with the West Brom game or at least one of the issues with the West Brom game I thought was that we just made one change too many with our defence and obviously that was compounded by the fact that we also switched up off our formation and brought, in, brought on Dejan Lovren late on in that game and switched to a back three that didn't help either but I just think we only had one player of the back four who played against Ma um, who played in the Man City games and who is a member of Liverpool's first choice back four playing in that West Brom game and that was Virgil van Dijk I think if you keep the two main centre-backs as a core, you get a lot more stability and hopefully we'll end up keeping a clean sheet in this game. And obviously Van Dijk and Lovren getting on very well at the moment. Ranyar Klavan's a decent footballer, but didn't play quite as well next to Van Dijk as Lovren has been over the past few games. And if there's a partnership forming with those centre-backs, if there seems to be a chemistry and an understanding between them, you, you really should be fostering it. You should be trying to make sure that you get the most out of them as a partnership. And by playing the week in, week out, unless there's injury problems like there kind of was, with Lovren before the West Brom game. That is how you're going to get the best out of them. So I think we go Van Dyke and Lovren at centre-back 
for this game. And because of that, I think we have a little bit of license to switch things up again with the fullbacks, which is why I think we're going to go with Moreno at left back and Joe Gomez at right back for this game. Obviously, neither of them had a great game against West Brom. I think it's fair to say defensively, they were a little bit poor. They really didn't offer that much going forward at all in that game. You know, Moreno was especially poor in his attempts to go forward. Joe Gomez was kind of anonymous at times and didn't really perform very well in those latter stages when we did concede those two goals. So, you know, it's not filling me with promise that we'll probably end up starting them in this game. But I just think, you know, rest those centre-backs, rest Robertson, rest Alexander-Arnold. They're both players who play very high energy. They put a lot of effort into those matches and I think you want them in absolute peak condition for the game against Roma in a, uh, a few days' time. So I think you go with Moreno and Gomez for this game. Then the midfield, this is where it gets interesting because obviously with Oxlade-Chamberlain missing, Liverpool are down to the absolute bare bones of their side in midfield. We've only got three three fit senior midfielders at the moment. That is Henderson, Milner and Vinaldum. Personally, I think we should be only be starting a maximum of two for this game. It's not ideal. In an ideal world, I'd be playing first choice midfielders in this game because that's what Liverpool should be doing. We should be doing everything we can to secure the three points, but we are just one injury away from having to play a kid in midfield in a Champions League semi-final and potentially a Champions League final as well. That is not a situation that Liverpool can afford to risk putting themselves in. So we have to take every single measure possible to keep away from that kind of situation. And that is why I think we will only be going with Henderson at the base because he's been doing very well recently. And then Genie Van Aldem on the side of him, just because, you know, Genie Van Aldem didn't play as many minutes as James Milner in the game against Roma. He came on about 20 minutes into the tie. It's not a huge amount of minutes that he won't have played but it will have a slight bearing on how much he's got in his legs for this game and then I think you go with Ben Woodburn as the other midfielder. It is a bold call, but in the situation Liverpool are, they have to make bold calls with their midfielders. You know, when you look at the other players we could bring in, aside from obviously James Milner, who I think deserves a little bit of a rest, there's a shout for resting Henderson as well because of a slightly questionable injury record he's had over the last few games, but you, you have to bite the bullet with one of them. You have to take the risk with putting at least two midfielders in there, and that's why I'm going with Henderson and Vinaldum. And I think Woodburn is the best of the other options we've got available. You know, Rafa Camacho, they've been shouts for him. There have been mentions of Curtis Jones as well. Quite a few academy players who could potentially make the step up for these games. Obviously, Jurgen Klopp has recently put in contingency plans where he's been having those academy kids training with the first team to prepare for these kind of situations. But I just think Ben Woodburn has a little bit more experience in the first team. You know, he's played a few games last season. He played quite a few in pre-season. He's played not many this season, but some of that is down to injury as well. And he's also had a big role to play in the under-19s in those European games as well. So so he has the kind of ability to, to not necessarily step up in the situations as big as the Premier League, but he's done it a little bit more than I think those other players in the academy have. And obviously also he's had some very good games for Wales as well. So I think you put uh, Woodburn in there. Like I said, not ideal, but something that Liverpool will just have to do. And then with the front three, again, we obviously have to make a change because I think absolutely don't risk Sadio Mane if there's any problem with him whatsoever. But unfortunately, because of that, I think that means you have to be starting Firmino and Salah for this game. Obviously, you want those players rested. You don't want them picking up injuries or getting fatigued with that massive game against Roma coming up. But I think if you make one more change to the front three, you get what happened against Everton where they were completely incohesive. We had no real imagination or creativity going forward and we just fell completely flat on our face whenever we tried to create goal-scoring chances. So I think you go with Salah, Firmino, and then I think bring in Ings uh, for Sadio Mane just because, you know, there's a shout for Dom Solanke and maybe shifting Firmino out wide, but I just think you're messing around with the formation a, a little bit too much there. And then if you put Ings in instead and just tell him to play a left-wing role and cut inside a lot, it's about as good as it can get in terms of replacing Sadio Mane. So yeah, not ideal. There are some issues with that starting eleven, and it does give you a few worries going into this game, but unfortunately with the situation Liverpool are in at the moment and with that massive game against Roma in Italy coming up on Wednesday night, that is the kind of lineup that I think we are just going to have to put out for this game. So Stoke City then, obviously they are a side that aren't 
in a very good way at the moment. I think it's safe to say they've had quite a few save our season games over the last few weeks and a lot of false starts in those games. You know, the Burnley and West Ham games, both of which they went 1-0 up and looked on course for a vital three points, then conceded equalisers. You've got this, the uh, game they played against Tottenham earlier on about a few weeks ago where they brought it back level to 1-0, looked like they were going to get a revival going and then ended up losing that game 2-1 with the notorious goal that we as Liverpool fans are all too aware of. But yeah, they've just had so many moments where their season looked like it was finally going to get back on track. Their uh, efforts for survival were finally going to get a kick up the backside and it just hasn't worked for Stoke. And I think that's the biggest worry for a team like them is that when they play well, when they look like they're going to get a result, they still end up losing and sometimes they end up losing badly. You know, the, the result that kind of gives me as a Liverpool fan a lot of optimism going into this game is the one that they had against Arsenal where they held out pretty well and looked like they might even get more than just a draw out of the game and they ended up losing 3-0 and that's what happens to sides that get relegated is just no matter what happens they just can't find a way to win and they end up losing and they end up dropping points and fortunately for Liverpool it, it that's what we'll hopefully be benefiting from this weekend and obviously in terms of individual players as threats I think the only one who really worries me is Jordan Shakiri for this game I mean obviously Mame Biram Juf has the potential to maybe do a Salomon Rondon you might think after what Rondon did to us last weekend against West Brom but I just having seen Juf over the last few games he's played for Stoke he looks so incompetence the wrong word and it's really not fair on him to say that but he just doesn't look up to the standard required of a Premier League centre forward and while Rondon hasn't looked like that over the past few games as well West Brom have experienced a recent revival that is why they got a result against Liverpool because they've suddenly got this bounce they've got this belief in themselves and that is completely absent from the Stoke City team at the moment so this is absolutely a game that Liverpool whether or not they play well and like I said that's the thing that gives me the most optimism going into this game they should absolutely be getting a result, getting three points from this one, and here is my three reasons why I think that they will. First of all, like I said, Stoke are in an absolutely terrible situation at the moment in terms of the Premier League table, and unfortunately for them, despite the fact this is typically a venue where a draw would be a very, very good result for them, they pretty much have to go for the win. Stoke don't really have any other choice now. I think they're like four points behind Swansea at the moment, but Swansea have two more games to play than them. The only team that have played as many games as them are six points above them now, and that's Crystal Palace. So Stoke absolutely have to get three points in this game. I don't think one point will be enough for them, and that should play into Liverpool's hands because they will have to come out. They will have to play expansive football. They won't be able to play the kind of low blocks that have caused Liverpool trouble in the past, especially when we've been missing dynamite players like Sadio Mane from our forward line. You'd think if Stoke were just going to park the bus this weekend, the lack of Mane and maybe the over-reliance on Firmino and Salah could cause us problems, but I can't see Stoke parking the bus because that simply isn't going to be good enough for them in this game. And second of all, I think there's a, there's a disorganisation around the way that Stoke play at the moment. I mean, if you look at the, the 11s that they've been putting out and the formations that they've been experimenting with, and that's a worry at this stage of the season that they are experimenting with different formations. It just doesn't feel like they have a clear footballing identity, a clear way of playing. And when you come up against Liverpool, a team that are so well drilled, that have such a clear formation, and like I said, a footballing identity to the way they play, I get the feeling that Stoke could just get absolutely torn apart. You know, they've experimented with 3-4-3 they're currently going for a kind of 4-4-2 but they're playing numerous players out of position in that you know they've got a right back they signed in January Moritz Bauer who is playing left mid in that 4-4-2 formation it just feels like they don't have a clear idea of how they want to set themselves up and if you go to Anfield in that way regardless of whether Liverpool are resting a few first team players you could be in for serious serious trouble especially when my third reason why we're going to beat Stoke Mohamed Salah will probably be starting obviously once again there are the calls to wrap Salah in cotton wool with that massive game against Roma coming up in just a few games uh, day's time after this one but like I said without Sadio Mane you've got to be playing Firmino and Salah and I just think you know like I said if Liverpool have an off day they could still win this game because of the situation that Stoke find themselves in and if Liverpool do have an off day if they st struggle for cohesion with the changes that they're expected to make for this Salah is the kind of player who can still come up with the goods you know goals that come to mind like the one that Mo Salah scored against Everton in the Merseyside derby earlier on in the season obviously Liverpool ended up drawing that game I'd like to think that in a, on any other 
another day without a dodgy referee and one single moment of attacking from Everton, we probably would have won that match and we would have won it because of a moment of absolute brilliance from Mo Salah when in a similar situation where we've made a lot of changes, we had a very we had a strong lack of cohesion in the side because of that. Mo Salah was still able of, co of coming up with the goods and getting a win for Liverpool. So I think if we do find ourselves struggling for goals, struggling for creativity in the final third, Mo Salah is the kind of player who we can just give the ball to and say, please Mo, give us some magic, win us the game. That is exactly what he brings to Liverpool Football Club and that is why I think that we will win the game this weekend. So that is all for this video. Do stick around later on for the FIFA 18 prediction show that is finally back. I've finally found a few spare hours in my schedule to film and edit that. So don't forget to stick around for that. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that button there. Check out some of the other videos that have been out on the channel over the past few days as well. Don't forget to follow at LFC Focus TV on Twitter. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in a bit for the FIFA prediction show. Bye for now.